today we will be dealing with the kidney right so i hope you all know the basic biology of kidney and even if you don't know uh, i am here to help you out so kidney is your bean shaped organ right you can say see it is shaped like a bean okay and one more thing that you must remember the height of kidney right you must remember that the height of kidney is around 11 cm the width of kidney is around 6 cm and if you consider the thickness it will come around 3 cm right so this was about the length width and breadth of the width breadth of the kidney first of all we must know what is kidney made up of so the kidney is made up of fibrous capsule okay this is your fibrous capsule right and uh, you must know that this fibrous capsule you know outside of this fibrous capsule you have your renal fascia right it is not visible in the model but so let me draw outside this fibrous capsule you will have your renal fascia and this renal fascia this renal fascia holds the kidney in the retroperitoneal position so i hope you all understood what is meant by renal fascia this circular part right this is known as hilum all right and this layer is this layer is capsule and this layer is cortex and this layer is medulla okay let me draw so this layer right here is a capsule right the capsule encloses the kidney right and uh, this layer here this is your cortex and within the cortex you have this pyramids right you have this pyramids and the layers that contains this medullary pyramids is known as medulla so basically the kidney has three layers the outer layer of capsule the middle layer of cortex and then the inner layer of medulla right so there are three layers and the medulla contains medullary pyramids and guess what is present inside this medulla yes you guessed it right neurons nephrons right i almost said neurons okay so inside medulla you have medullary pyramids and inside these pyramids right inside these pyramids you will have your nephron this is how your nephron looks right so this is your glomerulus right this part here is a glomerulus the yellowish part this cup shaped structure is known as bowman's capsule and this convoluted tube right this curved tube is known as proximal convoluted tubules and when this proximal convoluted tubules dips downward it becomes loop of hanley and then the distal part of the tube is known as distal convoluted tubules it is convoluted and curved and then you have the collecting duct okay so here you can see very clearly that uh, the nephron will receive blood from the branch of renal artery and this renal artery branch of renal artery is known as efferent arteriole and this efferent arteriole will make up the glomerulus right glomerulus is dense network of arterioles and then you can see another branch that will come out of the glomerulus this is known as efferent arteriole and this is really important right an efferent arteriole makes up your glomerulus and efferent arteriole when it bends downward when it goes downward it makes your pertubular capillaries right it makes your pertubular capillaries and these pertubular capillaries wrap around the tubules right the proximal convoluted tubules the loop of hanley and the distal convoluted tubules right so let me repeat again nephrons are your functional unit of kidney that are present inside your 
medullary pyramids right here you can see okay this is your structure of kidney and and in this medullary pyramids you have your nephrons at closed end of nephron is bowman's capsule and the open end of nephron is the collecting duct right and this tubule is wrapped by the pertubular capillaries right so what happens in the nephron that should be the question so a branch of renal artery that contains you know some protein some urea you know some waste particles you know maybe some drug right so that all along with blood will enter the glomerulus okay yeah? now glomerulus is your dense capillary network okay and there is high pressure inside of glomerulus so because of this pressure difference right because the pressure in afferent arteriole is less as compared to efferent arteriole because the diameter of efferent arteriole is smaller as compared to afferent arteriole so the blood comes from afferent arteriole into the glomerulus and all the filtration that has to be done is done here okay so glomerulus filtration occurs here right so all the substances are passed down into the proximal convoluted tubules okay and all the substances that are passed into the proximal convoluted tubules are known as filtrate okay so the filtrate comes into the proximal convoluted tubules then distal then sorry loop of henle and then distal convoluted tubules and along this pct loop of henle and dct right selective reabsorption occurs so filtration occurs in bowman's capsule glomerulus selective reabsorption occurs in proximal convoluted tubules loop of henle and distal convoluted tubules and when your urine is formed from collecting duct the urine is secreted into the minor calyxes right to the renal papilla okay so the function of collecting duct is tubular secretion okay bowman's capsule and bowman's capsule encloses the glomerulus and within the glomerulus because of the pressure difference between the afferent arteriole and the efferent arteriole glomerulus filtration occurs right and you bowman's capsule has three membranes which we will discuss in next class all the filtrate pass down into the proximal convoluted tubules and whatever the body has to reabsorb right like like sodium potassium calcium magnesium water all the absorptions of this substance happens in pct loop of henle and dct after selective reabsorption right when these things are reabsorbed into the capillaries then this capillaries ascends and connects to renal vein and all these substances are again taken back into the blood okay and then whatever is left behind right whatever filtrate is left behind it becomes urine right and it contains urea ammonia uric acid some amount of sodium some amount of potassium right so this urine will go into the minor calyxes through renal papilla and then minor calyx will merge into major ones and major ones will become renal pelvis and then it will drain into the ureter here you can see this collecting ducts gives the urine to minor calyxes right these smaller you know tubules tubes like structure are known as minor calyxes and these minor calyxes will give urine to major calyx and this major calyx will become one large tube which is known as renal pelvis and then renal pelvis will give urine to ureter and from ureter the urine will go into the bladder so this is how the three steps of filtration takes place inside kidney okay so we should know more about the bowman's capsule right so this is your bowman's capsule right and the blue structure that you are uh, that is visible in this screen is known as mesangium okay it also con controls the diameter of afferent arteriole and efferent arteriole right so it controls the amount of blood entering into the glomerulus hence you can say that mesangium has a big role 
in maintenance of your glomerulus filtration rate all right so you can see here the blood will enter the glomerulus and will leave efferent arteriole right and then this efferent arteriole will descend downwards and make pertubular capillaries that will do the selective reabsorption okay now these green cells that you can see here are the epithelial cells of the bowman's capsule right and between glomerulus and this epithelial cells you have your glomerular basement membrane right this triple layer is known as glomerulus basement membrane right so first is endothelial layer of the glomerulus then you have glomerulus basement membrane and then you will have your epithelial cells of the this green color cells are epithelial cells of the bowman's capsule so there are three layers right so here you can see the detailed structure of glomerulus right so you can see here that glomerulus is fenestrated right the glomerulus is fenestrated that means the endothelial cells has perforations holes in it